Hey guys, this is Kevin here, and if you're looking for an easy platform to make your own online community or membership, I'm excited to tell you about Circle. Circle is a comprehensive community platform tailored for creators, coaches, and entrepreneurs. With Circle, you can create a central hub for your community, events, and online courses, all in one location and completely under your brand. My goal with this video is to give you a complete picture of everything that you need to know to decide whether it's right for you. I'm going to guide you through three key areas. To begin with, I'll demonstrate how to create your own community in Circle. This will include the ability to add your own unique blend of spaces for activities such as discussions, events, chats, and courses. Next, we'll explore course creation in more depth. I'll show you the exact steps to add lessons and construct an online course in Circle. This will be useful whether you aim to create a membership with a collection of online courses, or if you plan to sell online courses that include communities or live call features. Finally, I'll guide you on how to invite new members to your community and keep them engaged. This will include details on how to process payments, and as a bonus, I'll share some additional tips on how I create a paid course or a community from scratch. So let's get started. By the way, if you want to join Circle, use my special link below the video. When you sign up with that link, I'll send you my top-notch, high-quality templates for free, like the Business Hub template where you can manage your business and the Finance Hub where you can track all your finances and much more. They're worth $900 or more, but you'll get that for free as a thank you for using my link because it's an affiliate link. When you use it, I do get a small commission at no cost to you, so thanks so much for using that. And once you're on Circle, look for the Get Started button located at the top right corner and click on it. This will allow you to begin a 14-day free trial. You'll uh, need to enter your name, email, and create a password. After filling out this information, click on the Sign Up button, and you'll proceed to the next page. On this page, you'll be asked to name your community. It's a good idea to use your business name for this. Uh, you'll also have the option to choose your community's URL. Although you'll initially be using a circle.so domain, you can change this to a custom domain later. For instance, instead of using a circle.so domain, I can use circle.demodigital.com for my demo digital community. You can adjust this in the settings after you've completed the onboarding process. Next, you'll need to decide whether you want your community to be public or private. If you click the button next to make this a private community, your community will be private. This is a good option if your community is primarily made up of paid members or students as it requires an invitation for access. On the other hand, a public community might be more suitable if you have free members or if you're creating a completely free community. Remember you can change these settings later. Once you've made your decision, click next and follow the prompts on the screen to personalize your account. After you've personalized your account, you'll be directed to the dashboard. Here you'll get your first look at your new Circle community. Before we move on, I want to point out that chat icon on the bottom left of the screen. You'll, uh, you'll use this to search for help articles or to get in touch with the Circle team if you need assistance. Next, let's set up your user profile. To do this, find your profile icon in the top right corner and click on it. A drop-down menu will appear, and from there, select the Edit Profile option. This will take you to a new page where you can manage your profile. Here you have the option to upload a photo. Simply click on the Upload a Photo option and choose a photo from your computer to upload. Next, you can add some personal details such as your full name, a headline, a bio, your location, website, and more. Once you've filled out this information, you'll be able to see your photo, bio, and a few links. These details will be visible to other members in the member directory. To save these settings, click on the Save Changes button, and then after saving, you can close this page by clicking on the cross icon in the top right corner. Now, if you go to the left side of the screen and click on the Members option, you'll be able to see a list of all members. This is where all future member profiles will be displayed, allowing your members to connect with each other. In addition to setting up your profile, it's important to understand the three key icons located in the top right corner of your screen. These icons are visible to you and all your members. Firstly, there's a bell icon. This is your notification center. It keeps you updated with the latest happenings in your community. You can customize your notification preferences anytime to suit your needs. Secondly, there's an icon for direct messages. This feature allows you to send private messages to other members in your community, and it's a great way to foster personal connections and engage in one-on-one -on -one conversations. Lastly, there's a bookmarks icon. This is a handy tool that allows you to save posts or lessons that you might find interesting or useful. You can easily access these bookmarked items later, making it a convenient way to keep track of content you want to revisit. 
Next, let's talk about how you can make your Circle community unique by customizing its branding. As an admin, you'll find a drop-down menu next to your community's name, which is not visible to other members of your community. Clicking on this menu will reveal several options. Scroll down to the bottom and click on Customize Theme. This will open a new page where you can personalize the look of your community. Here you can change the colors of your community in both light and dark modes. You can set a default mode, but your members will have the option to switch between the two. For this example, I'll use the light mode. Next, you'll find options to upload a community logo and a community icon. The logo will replace your community's name and the icon will appear before it. Uh, let me upload a logo to show you how it works. Once the logo is in place, you can further customize the look of your community by changing the colors. You'll find options to set the brand color and brand text color. By choosing the colors under these options, you can keep the look of your community simple and clean and of course on brand. Another option is to choose from a list of pre-built color combinations. Under the theme option, you'll see these preset colors. The default setting is default, but you can choose other exciting themes like Beach City, Espresso, Flamingo, Hacker, and more from the drop-down menu. If you want to go a step further, you can create a custom theme. Click on the Create a Custom Theme option to open a new set of options. Here you can set specific color codes for different parts of your community. Uh, this allows you to match your community's look with your existing business's brand, creating a cohesive feel. Once you've customized your community's branding, don't forget to save your changes. Click on the Save button at the top right corner of the screen. After refreshing the page, you'll see that your logo has replaced the community's name and colors have been updated to match your brand. Now let's discuss how to create space groups, spaces, and links. On the sidebar, you'll see an option called Spaces. When you hover over it, a plus icon appears. This icon is used to add new spaces and space groups. If you click on this icon, two options will pop up, Add Space and Add Space Group. Suppose you want to create a space group, which acts like a folder for individual spaces that belong together. To do this, click on the Add Space Group option. A window will pop up where you can enter the name of your space group and an optional custom URL slug. There are also options to hide the member count, hide from non-space members, and more. After setting these options, click on the Create option to create your space group. Now you can add individual spaces within this group. On the sidebar at the bottom, you'll notice an area for links. If you add something here, it acts like a bookmark to an external site. You'll uh, also have the option to add a label for the link and enter the external URL. This feature allows you to provide quick access to important external resources for your community members. You can add multiple links and rearrange them by simply dragging and dropping. Going back to adding spaces to your space group, when you want to add a new space, you simply click on the Add Space option. This action triggers a pop-up window where you can choose from different types of spaces to include in your community. Right now, your Circle community can have six different kinds of spaces. Remember, once you choose a type, you can't change it due to its unique settings. However, you can always add new spaces whenever you want, as most things in your Circle community are not fixed. Now let's understand the differences between these space types. The first one is a post space. This is akin to a traditional forum or social media feed where people can interact by adding comments and likes to posts. Next, we have events. This space is designed for your members to RSVP to upcoming events and add them to their personal calendars. It's a great way to keep everybody informed and engaged with community happenings. Following events, we have the chat space. This space is designed to function like WhatsApp or a Slack group. Instead of individual posts, it features a chat log where your members can engage in real-time discussions. It's perfect for fostering quick and dynamic conversations. Moving on, the next space is a course. Here you can add individual lessons that are grouped into sections, just like you would see on a traditional course platform. This space is ideal for educational content and structured learning. Lastly, we have two more space types, members and images. The members space creates a smaller member directory that includes only the members who have access. It's a great way to create sub-communities within your larger circle community. The images space, on the other hand, functions more like a portfolio or a visual feed. Uh, it's perfect for showcasing visual content or creating a gallery-like experience. As you can see, each space type serves a unique purpose and allows for different types of community engagement. By carefully choosing the right combination of space types, you can create a well-rounded and engaging experience for your members. All right, now that we've gone over the differences, it's time to create our first space. We'll begin with a post space. To do this, look at the left sidebar and find the space group you've entered. When you move your cursor over the space group, a plus icon will show up. Clicking on this plus icon will bring up two options, add space and add space group. 
As we're aiming to add a post space, we'll select the Add Space option. Upon clicking Add Space, you'll see six different types of spaces that we've previously discussed. We're interested in creating a post space, so we'll select Posts. After selecting Posts, click on the Next button to proceed. The next step involves naming your space. You'll see a field labeled Space Name where you can enter the name of this space. Uh, for this demo, we'll name our space Introductions. In addition to naming your space, you also have the option to customize its icon. To do this, click on the blue circle next to your space name. This will bring up three different sections, emojis, shapes, and custom. This customization adds a personal touch to your space and makes it easily identifiable for your community members. Once you've chosen a name and customized the icon, the next step is to set the access level for your space and circle. There are three access levels available. If a space is open, it means anyone in the community can join. If it's private, only members who have been invited can join, but it's still visible to other members in the sidebar. They'll see a locked screen if they try to access it without an invitation. The third level is secret, where the space is only visible and accessible to those who have been invited. Each level serves a different purpose depending on the nature of the space. For our introduction space, we'll choose the open level uh, because we expect that everyone in our community will want to access this particular space. Next, we have to set up how members will be notified about new posts. There are three options for post notifications. The first one is email, where members can receive an email every time a new post is made. The second one is in-app, where members will get a notification within the app whenever a new post is published. The third one is mobile, where members will get a notification on Circle's iOS or Android app when a new post is made. These options ensure that uh, members can stay updated about new posts in the space. After setting up the access level and post notifications, we're ready to create our space. Click on Create Space to finalize the setup. Now let's take a look at our newly created post space. You'll see introductions listed in the sidebar. The main canvas displays the discussion area where all the conversations will take place. This is where members will post their thoughts and engage in discussions about the space topic. If you want to personalize the space you've created, start by going to the top of the page. Here you'll find a drop-down menu next to the name of your space. Click on this drop-down menu and a list of options will appear. One of these is Customize. Clicking on it will reveal additional settings that you can adjust according to your preferences. In a post space, if you scroll down, you'll find options to change the layout. You can choose from a feed layout, a list layout, or a card view layout. Each layout offers a different way of presenting posts, so choose the one that best suits your space's needs. Another customization option is the sidebar. You can decide whether you want to keep the sidebar on or off on the right side of the screen. The sidebar can be useful for navigation, but if you prefer a cleaner look, you can choose to turn it off. You also have the option to add a cover image to your space. This can be a great way to visually represent the theme or topic of your space. Choose an image that resonates with the content of your space. For mobile users, you can upload a mobile thumbnail. Uh, this should be an image with a 16-9 ratio, and it will be displayed on the Circle iOS and Android apps. This thumbnail can help mobile users identify your space quickly. Once you've made all these changes and you're happy with how your space looks, don't forget to save your customizations. Click on the Save Changes button to ensure all your personal touches are applied to your space. This way, your space will reflect your unique style and preferences, making it more engaging and inviting for your community members. The next step is to create a post within your space. To do this, locate the New Post button, which can be found in the top right corner of your screen. Clicking on this button will open up a blank canvas. This is where you can let your creativity flow. You can add a title to your post and then proceed to write the main content. There are several options available to enhance your post. Uh, for instance, you might want to introduce yourself. In our case, we could start with something like, Hey, I'm Kevin. After that, you can use the icons at the bottom of your screen or the backslash key to access a variety of different blocks that can be used in your post. These blocks offer a range of features. You can add basic text blocks such as paragraphs, headings, or lists. You can also mention other people in your post. If you want to make your post more interactive, you can add polls or files. You can even embed videos into a, into a post. Uh, there are numerous options available to make your post more engaging. However, for now, let's focus on the post. Once you've written your post and are satisfied with it, it's time to publish. 
Publishing your post will take you directly to the landing page for the post itself. But if you navigate back to your introduction space, you'll see your newly published post. By default, members can like and comment on each other's posts, fostering a sense of community. Next, it's time to create an event space. To do this, you need to locate the plus add space option, which is typically found on the sidebar of your screen. Clicking on this option will prompt you to select the type of space you want to create. Since our goal is to create an event space, we'll select events. After making the selection, click on the next button to continue. In the following step, you'll be asked to name your space. We'll name ours Group Coaching. You also have the option to change the icon associated with your space. For instance, we could choose the ticket icon for this event. This space is intended only for students in the program, so we'll set it as a secret space. And to finalize the event space, click on the Create Space button. Once you've created your space, you'll notice that your calendar is currently empty. To add an event, click on the New Event button. We'll name our event Course Builders Coaching. In the When is the Event section, you can specify the date and time of your event. If your event is recurring, like a weekly event, you can set it to repeat at the same time every week. For example, if our event takes place every Monday at 12 o'clock p.m., we can set it up to repeat every Monday. You also need to specify when the event ends in the Event Ends field. The final step is to choose the location of your event in the Where is the Event section. You have a few options here. You could provide a URL for an external platform like Zoom, or you could choose to use Circle's live stream or live room features. A live stream is like an online class where you talk in front of everybody and people watching can type messages to join in. Uh, a live room, on the other hand, is more like a Zoom meeting where you can switch between speaker and gallery views. Uh, for our coaching call, we'll choose the Circle live room option and use the gallery. Next, you'll see options like record this live, automatically post recording to event, mute participants, and more. These options can be toggled on or off based on your preferences. For instance, if you want to record the event and automatically post the recording to the event page afterwards, you can toggle that automatic post recording to events option. This not only ensures that your event is recorded, but also saves you the extra step of manually posting the recording later. Once you're satisfied with your settings, you can click on the Save Draft button to secure your changes. After saving your draft, you'll be directed to a new page where all the information you've entered so far is displayed under the Basic Info tab. However, we need to provide more details about our event, so we'll navigate to the Post Details tab. Here you can add a cover image for your event and write a description to give your attendees a clear idea of what to expect from the event. Once you've added your cover image, and written your event description, you can save these changes by clicking on the Save Changes button. After saving your changes, you're ready to publish your event. To do this, click on the Publish button, which is usually located at the top right corner of your screen. Once you publish the event, you'll be directed to the event page. This page, also known as the event page, is where all the details of your event are displayed. It's also where the recording of your event will be automatically posted after the event concludes. On the side of the page, your members will see an option to add the event to their calendar. Now let's take a look at how to go live in Circle. Even if your event isn't ready to go live yet, you can explore the interface. To do this, click on the Go Live option located at the bottom corner of your screen. Upon clicking, you'll see three options on how you want to go live. These options are Schedule a Live Event, Start a Live Room, and Start a Live Stream. For this demo, we'll select the middle option, Start a Live Room. After making your selection, click on the next button at the bottom to proceed. The next step involves setting up your live room. You'll need to enter a title, create a custom URL slug, and provide a description for your live room. For example, you might want to name uh, your live room YouTube demo. After entering these details, you'll see an option to record this room. If you want to record your live session, toggle this button on. Once you've adjusted your settings to your liking, click on the next button to continue. At this point, you might not have any participants to invite in your live room. That's okay, you can still proceed with setting up the live room. To test your video, click on the Test Your Video button at the bottom of your screen. This will allow you to check your video and audio settings before you go live. You'll notice several options related to your microphone, camera, and settings. Clicking on the Settings gear will open up a pop-up window with additional options. These include using an integrated webcam, blurring your background, mirroring your video, changing your microphone, uh, suppressing background noise, and changing your audio output. Choose the options that best suit your needs, then click the cross symbol to close the pop-up window and save your changes. Now you're ready to start your live room. Click on the Start Room button to begin. Your live room will start loading, and once the loading is complete, your live room will be up and running. 
Once your live room is active, you'll see various options at the bottom of your screen. These include device settings uh, accessible by clicking on the gear icon, toggling your microphone and camera on or off, ending the room, sharing your screen, using the raise hand button, viewing the event time, chatting with invited participants, and viewing the number of participants involved. At the top right corner of your screen, you'll see a view button. Clicking this allows you to change your view to either gallery view or speaker view. You also have the option to use full screen for a more immersive experience. When you're ready to end your live room, simply click on the end room button. Your live room will then be closed. Next, let's create an online course within your community circle. The first step in creating an online course is to create a space group. You can do this by clicking on the plus icon and then choose the add space group option. After that, you'll need to give your space group a name. For instance, you might choose to call it courses if you plan to house all of your courses within this group. Once you've chosen a name, click the create button to move forward. After creating your space group, you'll be directed to your space group dashboard. This is where you can start adding courses to your group. To do this, click on the add space button located at the top right corner. You'll then see six different types of spaces. For this demo of creating an online course, we want to select the course option. After clicking on course, click next to continue. At this point, you'll be presented with three different types of courses to choose from. The first type is self-paced. This means that the course begins as soon as the member enrolls and all the content is immediately available to them. The second type is structured. In this type, the uh, course also starts when a member enrolls, but the sections are released gradually based on their enrollment date. The third type is scheduled. This type of course starts on a specific date and the sections are released in relation to that date. But I'm going to build a self-paced course, so I'll select self-paced from the given options and click on the next button. The next step is to name your space. I'm going to call this course Builders. You also have the option to choose a different emoji, shapes, or custom shapes to represent your course. To add a personal touch, I might opt for the toolbox emoji. After selecting your preferred emoji, you can finalize your course setup by clicking the Create Space button. This action will take you to the course dashboard. Here you can see the admin view for this course. Once you have students enrolled, you'll be able to see their information and track their progress, including what percentage of the course they've completed. However, for now, we're going to start building out our curriculum in Circle. To do this, click Edit Lessons. This will take you to the Lessons page. Here you can add sections by clicking on the Add Section button. These sections will house individual lessons. For this example, I'm going to add a section and call it Profitable Idea. Let's add one more section as an example and we'll call that Course Planning. You'll notice that these are all in draft mode until you publish them. In fact, the entire course is a draft until you decide to publish it. This allows you to fully develop your course before making it available to students. Next, let's edit an individual lesson. To do this, you'll need to click on Edit Lesson. This action will take you to Circle's Lesson Editor. At the top of the editor, you'll find an option to upload or embed media. This is typically where you'll add uh, featured media like video. You have the choice to either upload a video directly or embed one from a compatible third-party platform. To upload a video, simply click on Upload and then choose a file from your computer. After a few moments, your video will be available for preview. It's important to note that this is just a temporary preview since the course hasn't been published yet. This is why you'll see a warning message. If you want, you can hover over the video and replace the thumbnail, but that's entirely up to you. Below the video, there's an area where you can add more information. You can type in any additional details here. If you use the backslash key, you'll see the same block menu that we saw when we added a post. This menu allows you to add basic text blocks, upload files like images, audio, PDFs, GIFs, and even embed websites. Next, I wanna demonstrate how you can add a downloadable file to this lesson. To do this, click on the file option and then click the choose file button to upload a file from your computer. For this example, I'm going to upload a PDF from my computer. Uh, you'll be able to see the PDF below once it's uploaded. However, I also want to show you another way to add a file using the sidebar. This method can be useful and I'll show you the difference uh, when we preview this lesson. To add a file using the sidebar, click on files and then choose the add file option to upload a file from your computer. For this example, I'll upload the same PDF here. Now you'll see that we have our PDF in both places. And before we preview this, I want to step back and revisit the general section. Here you'll find an option that allows you to either enable or disable comments for each lesson. This can be a great way to foster interaction and spark discussions among your students. You can also enable the option to publish this lesson. 
Once you've made your choice, you can go ahead and save the changes. To save all the changes we've made, simply click on the Save button located at the top right corner of the screen. Next, we can get a glimpse of how the lesson appears to the students. To do this, click on the View Lesson option, which is situated next to the Save button at the top right of the screen. This will take you to the Student Preview. Uh, on the side, you'll see the course outline, and in the main area, you'll see the lesson uh, as we've just created it. In this preview, you'll notice the PDFs that were mentioned earlier. One, is, one of the PDFs is displayed and easily accessible, while the other is tucked away under a folder icon on the right. Both placements have their advantages and could be preferred by different course graders depending on their specific needs. In this view, you'll also see various icons. Let's briefly discuss what each of these icons represents. The chat icon, when clicked, opens up the comments bar. This feature will be activated once the course is published. The course outline is also displayed here, along with the files we've covered. Another icon allows students to bookmark the lesson, making it easy for them to return to it at a later time. If you exit this view and return to the admin view, you'll see three dots next to the Edit Lessons button. Clicking on these dots will reveal several options. Select the View Course option to see the course from the perspective of a student or member. When a member accesses the, uh, the course, they'll see the course outline on the sidebar. Uh, they can then click on any individual lesson to view it as we did earlier. Finally, if we navigate back to our community, you'll see our course space listed in the sidebar. Additionally, all the courses that your student has access to will be displayed in the courses section on the sidebar. This makes it easy for students to find and access the courses they're enrolled in. Okay, now that we've added lessons, let's talk about the search bar located at the top of the screen. This search bar is a powerful tool for both you and your members. It allows you to revisit previous discussions or lessons on a specific topic. Imagine a situation where you vaguely remember discussing a topic but can't recall the exact details of where it was discussed. This is where the search bar comes into play. By simply typing in the relevant keywords, you can quickly locate the specific lesson or discussion. This feature enhances navigation and makes it easier for you to move around the platform. The search bar is not just beneficial to you, but also for your members. They might be interested in revisiting past discussions on a particular topic. By using the search bar, they can easily sift through posts and find the information that they're looking for. The search bar is more than just a tool, it's a means of empowering you and your members. It gives you the ability to access information quickly and efficiently. Once you've set up your community, the next step is to bring in members. There are several methods to do this. First, click on the drop-down menu next to your community's name. When the drop-down menu appears, select the Members option. This is where you can manage your community members. Uh, and as you begin to add people, you'll see their names appear on this list. One of the options you'll see here is the Invite button. Uh, when you click this, it opens up several ways for you to invite members to your community. You can send an invitation email, import a CSV file in bulk, or share an invitation link. If you opt to send an invitation email, you'll need to enter the recipient's name and email address. Then click on the Invite button located at the bottom of the page. You, uh, you also have the option to, to customize your invitation message to add a personal touch. If you decide to import a CSV file, ensure it contains all the necessary information, such as the member's name and email address. This method is particularly useful when you want to invite a large number of members at one time. Alternatively, you can share an invitation link. This link can be copied and shared through various channels such as email or social media. When someone clicks on this link, they'll be directed to your community and asked to sign up. Lastly, you have the option to add new members manually. By clicking on the Add Without Invitation button, you can enter their information directly. This method is useful when you want to add members who have already agreed to join your community. Your Circle community comes equipped with a comprehensive analytics feature. To access this, you need to click on the drop-down menu located next to your community's name. From the options that appear, select Analytics. This will take you to the Analytics dashboard. The dashboard provides a broad overview of your community's performance, and it includes data on the number of members active daily over the past 30 days, the total count of active and inactive members, pending invitations, monthly active users, and new members added each month. The dashboard also gives insights into the most active times and days, the most frequent in spaces, and the most popular posts. This information can help you understand when your community is most vibrant and which topics or spaces are attracting the most attention. In addition to the general overview, the analytics dashboard also offers detailed sections for different aspects of your community. These include separate analytics for members, spaces, posts, and comments, as well as messages. 
Next, let's talk about Circle's plans and pricing. Circle offers five distinct plans to cater to different needs. The first one is the basic plan, which costs $49 per month, perfect for beginners and includes all the essential features that the professional plan offers. It's a great starting point for small communities. The professional plan is next, priced at $99 per month. It's the most favored choice and offers a host of features. These include detailed member profiles, searchable member directory and discussion forums. It also allows you to organize events, offer paid memberships and use a custom domain. Uh, additional perks include a weekly community digest, courses, live streams, chat rooms, unlimited members and the ability to customize with branding analytics and conversion tracking. For larger businesses, the business plan at $219 per month is a step up. It includes everything in the professional plan, plus advanced features like workflows, custom profile fields, API access, and email white labeling. It also offers a content co-pilot, automated transcriptions, and activity scores. If you opt for an annual subscription, you can also avail migration services for courses. The enterprise plan is the top tier, ideal for brands, and costs $399 per month. Uh, this comprehensive plan offers unlimited workflows, custom single sign-on, priority support, and advanced analytics. It also features uh, lower transaction fees, a sandbox community, and allows for up to 100 admins or moderators. Uh, if you commit annually, you get concierge onboarding, quarterly business re reviews, and a dedicated customer service manager. Finally, for those seeking a more personalized experience, Circle.so offers Circle Plus with custom pricing. This premium service enables you to launch a brand community app in less than four weeks and requires a discussion with sales to get started. Remember, use my link. Don't miss out on these bonuses. Each plan comes with a free 14-day trial so you can test out the features and decide which plan uh, best fits your community's needs. As your community grows, you also have the flexibility to upgrade or downgrade plans as needed. Now, you might be curious about how Circle fares against other popular community platforms, so let's compare a few of the most popular community platform options. First, let's consider Circle and Mighty Networks. Mighty Networks is a renowned community platform with a pricing structure very similar to Circle's. However, I found their interface a bit difficult to navigate. Uh, the dashboard looks crowded and messy. While many users are co uh, content with Mighty Networks, I personally find Circle easier to use, both as an administrator and as a community member. Another common comparison is between Circle and School, that's S-K-O-O-L. Uh, there are two key differences that could be deal breakers. First, School was designed as a community marketplace, meaning your community will reside on School's website, and they currently have no plans to allow businesses to use custom domains. Secondly, every school community has only one discussion space for all members at this price point. So if you have multiple programs that require separate discussions, you'll need to create and pay for separate school communities. These features are deal breakers for me, but other business owners might find them worth exploring. Lastly, you might be considering Circle versus Facebook groups. Honestly, I believe free Facebook groups can be quite effective for attracting leads. However, I find them distracting and difficult to keep updated when they're part of a paid course or membership. While it might make sense to use Facebook to test the waters, I believe most business owners will eventually prefer a dedicated community platform like Circle for their paid courses and communities. This is because Circle offers a superior overall user experience and allows you to build under your own brand. As a bonus tip, I wanna share two common strategies for launching a new community on Circle. The first strategy is to adopt an MVP mentality. MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product. In the tech industry, an MVP is the initial version of an app or platform that is released to early users. It includes only the essential features needed for the product to function. Over time, the company refines and enhances the product as the user base expands. You can apply the same concept to your Circle community. Consider what the absolute necessities are for your initial users. This approach can simplify the launch process and allow your community to naturally develop and evolve over time. The second strategy is to start small. Despite what many people think, you don't need a massive audience or numerous members to launch a community or a community-powered course. You can often begin with a small group, even just 10 people, to create a meaningful experience. Consider who you can serve, what goals they are trying to achieve, and what minimum viable features you need to create to help them reach those goals. That's it for this video. I hope you learned more about Circle and how it can help build your community. If this video was helpful for you, you can help me out and use my Circle link, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in learning more, check out another video I believe you'll enjoy.